When I was a young girl, I remember sitting at the kitchen counter with my grandmother, watching her make jam from the berries we gathered in her garden. I was amazed that those bitter berries would become the sweet jam that I would enjoy on my toast in the days to come. To me, this was experiencing yet another form of magic that my grandparents always seemed to have, that magic that came out of their garden. That garden still teaches me so much about life. There's a quote that says, the syntactical nature of reality, the real secret of magic, is that the world is made of words. And if you know the words that the world is made of, you can make of it whatever you wish. Those early childhood summer days in my grandmother's garden was when I experienced the teachings of transformation, growth, and magic. The very process of the word that I wouldn't learn until many years later in life. That word is alchemy. To witness the metamorphosis of a butterfly is an act that every child should be made to experience. The work and preparation of the caterpillar as it prepares for the coming shift. Destructive to a garden for the aesthetic beauty we might desire, yet the diligent and disciplined commitment to the seemingly destructive work, necessary though, for it to create its own cocoon for the transformational shift. That cocooning for which one can only wonder if that caterpillar knows of the coming pain that through the dissolution, dissolution of its entire form and experience as it knows life currently to be. The painful melting away of its skin body into a goo that is somehow equipped with such divine wisdom to guide the dissolving form with perfection. To witness the hardening of the cocoon and the quiet wait for something to happen, an eternity to a child this wait can be. Then finally, movement. Yet this movement isn't a Christmas morning kind of movement, celebration. It's the witnessing of a fight and a struggle to break free from that self-imposed prison. Now that the transformational process has come to its completion and its own cocoon must be destroyed or else that creature rebirthing inside will most assuredly die. The struggle that is of tearing apart the old shell, blood, and pain, all experienced in silence, according to a human ear. Yet as a kid, I only wondered what would be heard if... Was it the call for help, a cry, the fear that that little winged creature would express if it had the chords of a human voice? Then, to at once spread its wings, let them reach out and expand. And with inspiration, suddenly leap unknowingly. If only by faith or necessity, I will never understand but releasing its grip from this earth here to enter into a life of a sky-bound winged creature. That mountain, mountainous faith that only a magical spiritual being could have. To instinctually gather with the others of its new winged tribe and to begin its new journey in a world with a new purpose in which its travel in itself is to share its beauty across the continents. That caterpillar's life forever ignited in my heart a path towards alchemy. Alchemy is an ancient practice spanning back before time before time. Alchemy is understood to be science and a discipline that sought to transform base metals into noble metals through a process of transmutation. At its core, though, alchemy is really a spiritual and philosophical discipline that to seek transformation, transformation of the individual to achieve spiritual enlightenment. Alchemy was not just about physical transmutation of these metals and psyche, but also about transforming the alchemists themselves, believing that by purifying your own soul and spirit, they could also transmute base metals into gold and thus could in some way acquire a power, an elixir of life to transform all of existence in and of itself. William Goss said that the true alchemists, they don't change lead into gold, they change the world into words. Alchemy is that word that I fell in love with 
as I began to understand that deep process of transmutation and transcendence during my initial years of my spiritual walk. As I grew and stepped into maturity and into my initiatory path as a medicine woman, I saw the destruction that my unconscious decisions have caused. I began the cocooning of my own, the dissolution of all that was, and began as it though it was all part of fate all along. Through this experience, every pain, hurt, trouble, and trauma that I had ever experienced came to the surface asking to be seen. In this initiatory experience, it's not something I would wish upon anyone. It was the way of alchemy and the path of medicine to learn to hold these darknesses, to relive them, to learn to look deeper into them, to take responsibility, to gain that humility, and to learn how to extract the most darkest and poisonous parts of that venom from these experiences in life to begin to alchemize them into medicine. This path of medicine is here for us all. Perhaps we are all caterpillars in a state of destructive consumption, unknowingly preparing for our fate to see a chemical shift within, turning pain into power, turning trauma into transformation, that sacred elixir of life being the very medicine to alchemize it into words of inspiration and salve. I believe that alchemy is the way of the medicine people, the shamanic guardians and the earth keepers alike. It is to look at every venom as a medicine, the darkness as a gift, and the suffering of society as that very destructive path of the kill caterpillar's life being evident. To see those black sheep that society may not always understand as the diamonds in the rough, and the beings that are emerging from the chrysalis itself. Alchemy is the ability to have the wisdom of the realms and the strength to actualize that wisdom into physical form through transmutational work, through action, through word. It is to know that it is a caterpillar and it must commence on that journey of dissolution, purification, to come undone on every dimension this current experience shares to eat the necessary leaves of knowledge and diligence, to trust that the self-isolation is only the inauguration of the great ceremony to come, a preparatory process of becoming a new creature. We are all capable of this great transmutation, to see that deep down we too are energy and all the same as all of creation and animated with the consciousness to witness it all. It is for this consciousness that we must realize our power to shift everything, to let it all go, to dissolve what was, an alchemical intent to create new life. This is that vision that we must all see. Alchemy is the door of transmutation, and choice is the key to unlock that door. Vision is to pull it open, and focus is to walk through that door with discipline of envisioning and removing the rubble that blocks the way. It is to utilize your consciousness to see the inner pieces of you that resist your dreams, that block the experiencing of your vision. And consciousness requires an exchange. You must cocoon it all and alchemize the shift with new words that align with the heart, recoding, shifting, and releasing of what was. You see, you no longer describe the butterfly as walking in the garden. The butterfly now flutters or flies through that garden, no longer eating on the greens, but seeking the nectar of flowers to partake in a pollination process destined to the perfect design. Saul Williams said, we are unraveling our navels so that we may ingest the sun. We are not afraid of the darkness, we trust that the moon shall guide us. We are determining the future at this very moment. We know that the heart is the philosopher's stone. Our music is our alchemy. Alchemy is the purpose, the intention of it all. It is to seek out that vision for life, a dream, and pursue it in curiosity. But most don't dare dream for fear of leaving that cocoon, and for some, they have yet to enter the cocoon due to enjoying the consumption of the green garden. 
Perhaps they stayed a little bit too long. Paolo Giello says, Tell your heart that the fear of suffering is worse than the suffering itself, and that no heart has ever suffered when it goes in search of its dreams, because every second of the search is a second encounter with God and eternity. There's only one way to learn. It is through action. The words are action. See, everything you need to know you have already learned through your journey. And now you get to step into the magic, the magic of alchemy and pursue the thing that scares you. The mind may want to revolt and fight and stay in its norm. And this is where transmutation of the work comes in. The actualization of the hidden power within us all and to surrender to the process. Words infuse the power of choice alchemically, but the gooing is to learn through action. There is magic, but you have to be the magician. You have to make that magic happen. This is a quote by Sidney Sheldon. I love that quote because we do have to be the magician. It's like we need to stop asking God to do for us what we, what God can only do through us. Alchemy is really this secret tradition of the redemption of spirit from matter. I think Terence McKenna says it best that nature loves courage. You make the commitment and nature will respond to that commitment by removing impossible obstacles. Dream the impossible dream and the world will not grind you under. It will lift you up. This is the trick. This is what all the teachers and philosophers who really counted who really touched the alchemical gold. This is what they understood. This is the shamanic dance in the waterfall. This is how magic is done, by hurling yourself into the abyss and discovering that it's a feather bed. I say, turning raspberries into jam, turning mold into psychedelic journeys to open the heart, turning the venom of a frog into a purgative to heal the body, caterpillars turning into butterflies, the process of alchemy is to turn the unconsciousness or hurt in your life into the very elixir of life. That magical power, a key to the door of your heart, where the alchemical gold channels the great cosmic power to and through you. It is to choose and prove that choice through action and words. It is to become medicine. This is the spiritual and metaphysical way of the mystics, of the medicine people of our time. We begin with the power of our words, the choice spoken out loud, to cause the imagery in the mind to begin to plant the seed, the seed that is yet to become another raspberry bush for a child to see the magic of berries turn to jam and caterpillars turn into the winged symbol of magic itself. What magic are you bringing here? What magic are you choosing to create? For this is the power of the creator. You are the creator. And it's time to dream, make a vision, choose it. Bring it to life through words and actions. Sing your soul song. This is the power of all.